So one of my favorite all-time topics when it comes to Pokemon, and easily one of the most interesting out there, is the concept of cut content. When it comes to Pokemon as well as video games in general, obviously there is a lot of content that goes unused that was considered but did not make it into the final game. And in the case of Pokemon specifically, especially in recent years, we have learned about a bunch of amazing cut content that was planned for various main series Pokemon games, but for one reason or another just did not make it into the final product. And some of this content is so amazing that it is questionable as to whether or not it should have even been cut in the first place. So in today's video, I am going to be going over my top 5 pieces of cut Pokemon content that should not have been cut, in my opinion. Even though all of the Pokemon games end up pretty good in their final forms, you can't help but feel like they could have been made even better by some of the stuff that was just left on the cutting room floor. So without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and get started. Coming in first on the list at number 5 are some of the story details that were considered but eventually scrapped from Pokemon Gold and Silver. Pokemon Gold and Silver's pre-release content, especially its beta, has been heavily documented over the past year and a half or so, ever since that infamous 1997 beta demo of the games was leaked online and revealed a ton of cut content that we never knew about before. And some of that cut content consisted of various plot details that were in place for the original story of the game. And those details, amongst other things, included both Misty and Giovanni being a part of the Elite Four, which alone would have completely changed the story of Gold and Silver, as the entire plot obviously centers around Team Rocket trying to resurrect the organization and bring Giovanni back in order to lead them, but in addition to that there was also a subplot of Oak going missing and running away essentially from the Kanto region in favor of Johto, there was also an imposter Oak character that was present in the game, Blue takes the role of Professor Oak's assistant, and there is also no Professor Elm to be found, he also references Red multiple times, and overall, the plot of the games in its beta form was more of a direct sequel to Red and Blue as opposed to a sort of pseudo-sequel that we see in the final product. And even though the final plot of Gold and Silver is just fine, which is why this sits at only number 5 on the list, you can't help but feel like some of these original story elements, like the Imposter Oak character or Giovanni being a part of the Elite, four would have been amazing at the same time. Coming in at number 4 is another more recent, well-documented piece of cut content from a more recent game that could have helped that game immensely in my opinion, and that was the function of Pokemon following you in Pokemon Sun and Moon. If you haven't heard about it before already, within the data of Pokemon Sun and Moon are both walking and running models for every single Pokemon through Generation 7, very likely meaning that the feature of Pokemon following you was going to be included into these games before it was scrapped for some reason, likely due to technical limitations. And with this one, it is pretty straightforward as to why this definitely should have been included into the games, because Pokemon following you is one of the most beloved and highly appreciated features in any Pokemon game ever. Ever since it was first introduced in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, fans have clamored for its return, and its return in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was seen with universal praise. Also, because Pokemon Sun and Moon were somewhat divisive amongst the fan base, even though they were pretty good games, in terms of them just doing a lot of things differently, definitely could have benefited a ton from having Pokemon following you in those games, and I feel like a lot more people would like Sun and Moon a lot more if it simply just had that feature. This one though, even though it absolutely should have been included into the game, I don't think we can blame Game Freak for in all likelihood, because as I said before, it is most likely the case that this was removed from the game due to technical limitations, because it's unlikely that a system like the 3DS could have handled everything that was going on in Sun and Moon, plus adding Pokemon following you on top of that and adding one more model into the overworld that it would have to keep track of. Pokemon Sun and Moon already pushed the 3DS to its limits, so it's very likely that it just couldn't handle the Pokemon following you on top of everything else. Nevertheless though, it is definitely the case that it would have made Sun and Moon a heck of a lot better.
Speaking of ways to make Pokemon Sun and Moon better, this next pick at number 3 definitely would have been a game changer for a lot of people. While not explicitly stated, it was highly, highly implied in a Game Informer interview about the history of Pokemon that gyms were originally going to be in Sun and Moon until a very late stage of development where they were swapped out for the trials. In an interview with Game Informer for their History of Pokemon article, Shigeru Omori stated that the trial system in Pokemon Sun and Moon wasn't really a concrete part of the game until the game actually went into the main debugging phase, stating that it was so late into the game's development that it was implemented that they actually did not have the help of the programming or art teams, and basically, the game designers had to create everything about the trials completely on their own based on what was already in the game that they had to work with. And even though, as I mentioned, it is not explicitly stated within this interview that gyms were going to be in the game before they decided to include Trials, the fact that they do say that Trials were such a late inclusion into the game, and we of course know that Trials are the replacement for gyms in this game, tells us that before they decided to include Trials at that late point in development, there had to have been something within the games already at this point that the Trials would have replaced, and the only thing that this could have really been are traditional gyms. While the trials in Sun and Moon aren't completely terrible, they are very hit and miss amongst fans, and I know for me personally, I much prefer the gyms. So if gyms had been included into the game originally instead of trials, I think that would have made the game a heck of a lot better, it just would have made the overall experience and the overall quality of the game just that much more enjoyable, and so for that reason, and because I know that a lot of other people feel the same way, this is definitely something that should not have been cut from Pokemon Sun and Moon. Okay, rolling into number two is where we start to get into the egregious category of things that absolutely should not have been cut, and it's kinda ridiculous that they did. And starting off at this number two spot is the Arceus Azure Flute event. Now this one is a very infamous piece of cut content that you've probably already heard about considering it's been around for a while, but just to recap, back during the days of Generation 4, there was an event planned in order for players to be able to obtain the mythical Pokemon Arceus. Now all of this sounds well and good and sounds pretty standard, especially during the days of Generation 4 where mythical and legendary Pokemon events were all over the place, but for some random reason, the Azure Flute event which would have allowed you to obtain Arceus within the game was cut altogether, meaning that it could not be legitimately obtained for a while despite being introduced in this very same generation. Given just how important of a Pokemon Arceus is to not only Generation 4, but to the entire Pokemon world as well, the exclusion of this event seems rather strange. But then it goes from bad to completely ridiculous once you find out the specific reason as to why this event was cut. According to Junichi Masuda, the Arceus event was cut from the game because it was thought to be too confusing for players to be able to carry out. And you know, even though I love my man Junichi, I've gotta tell you, that is a bunch of bullcrap. Through hacking, plenty of people have been able to access and carry out the Arceus event even though it was not made available, and that clearly shows that it carries out just the same that many of the other events in Generation 4 also do, and there is nothing confusing about it whatsoever in any way, shape, or form, so therefore there is absolutely no justification whatsoever as to why this event should have been cut. Since the reason they gave for cutting the Arceus event clearly doesn't make any sense, there must have been some other explanation as to why they decided to scrap it. Unfortunately, we will probably never know, but from every angle that we can currently tell based on what we know about the Arceus event and the way it operates in the game, it absolutely should not have been cut in any way, shape, or form. At number one, we have something that is official and technically unofficial at the same time, and that would be the Eternal Flower Floette, as well as everything else that makes up the lost title that is known as Pokemon Z. 
Even though Pokemon Z has not technically been confirmed to have officially been a thing at this point in time, if you pay any attention to Pokemon whatsoever and have any sense of knowledge of what has been going on the past couple generations, you know that Pokemon Z was absolutely going to be a thing at one point in time before mysteriously and inexplicably it was cancelled. We can very easily say this because of things like the Eternal Flower Floette, which is still in the data of the Generation 6 and Generation 7 games as an obtainable Pokemon even with its own signature move, but it was never distributed or even talked about at all. And furthermore, you also have the presence of complete Zygarde in Pokemon Sun and Moon that has no business whatsoever being there that was clearly meant for something bigger within the Pokemon X and Y Kalos-based game. And then in Pokemon X and Y itself, there's just a bunch of things that are clearly not finished or incomplete in terms of their purpose. You have the Kalos Power Plant, for instance. You have the Korowei Train Station, for instance, and a bunch of other things that there was more to them than meets the eye, that there was more planned for them than we got to see, but once again, for whatever reason, Game Freak just decided to abruptly scrap it all. The reason why I put this one at number one on the list is because we are literally talking about an entire game here that got completely cancelled altogether in all likelihood. In addition to that as well though, I really really enjoy the Kalos based games. X and Y are some of my favorites in the entire series, so the fact that Generation 6 is the only generation that never got a follow up game in some way shape or form, despite having all of the potential in the world to produce something really special in in that regard is an absolute travesty and I am just dying to know why exactly they decided to do this because personally I can't see any reason as to why cancelling an entire game like this was a good idea. If I had to take one guess as to why this happened, I would say that it was probably to allow more development time for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, as well as Pokemon Sun and Moon that was going to mark the 20th anniversary of the franchise, but nevertheless, it just, once again, is an absolute tragedy, and that is why it is my number one piece of cut Pokemon content that absolutely should not have been cut. So there we have it everybody. Now if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to give it a like but I also want to hear your thoughts in the comments below about what you think about all of this cut content. Do you agree with me that it should not have been cut or do you think they were justified in excluding this content from the final games? Let me know in the comments below and if there's any other cut content that you really enjoy as well that you know of be sure to let me know as well. Also, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content all the time, and if you would like to support the channel further, you can do so by listening to my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and checking out my Pokemon Cardinal project if you haven't yet. With all of that being said though, I'll be back on Saturday with another video, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can know as soon as it goes live, and until then, as always, I love you guys very much, and I will smell you guys later.